Hello everyone, Django Fett here, and back with a State of Star Wars Book of Boba Fett discussion. This one is Episode 4, The Gathering Storm. And once again, I am joined with my fellow compatriots, Star Wars compatriots, to discuss this episode. With the first one being... General CJG here, of course. <laughs> and the best person of all? Me, Captain Hansen, the guy you all want to see and then some. So this episode is directed by someone I'm not fully aware of. He's um, done a lot of TV shows and stuff like that. His name is Kevin Hancheneron. Forgive me for mispronouncing that. I know I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was, um, I predicted this would be a 53-minute episode. I don't know about you guys, but I got it completely wrong, <laughs> as this one was a 48-minute long episode. Yeah, it was it was definitely it was longer than the previous one, episode three, but it was shorter than episode two. So somewhere in there. But I believe I predicted forty five. You got close then. I think I predicted I think I was similar to Henson. I don't remember. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna be discussing this episode. So first before we go into the actual spoilers into the discussion of this episode. Let's give our thoughts on this episode, starting with CJ. Well, I thought it was way better than episode three. Like, it was the episode that I wanted to see after seeing episodes one and two. Like, I wanted, like, I had, uh, like, we've been having questions about what happened in the past, why is Boba doing this and that. And episode four pretty much delivered on almost all of them. And that was what I wanted episode three to do. But episode three decided to do some other stuff. So, yeah. But, yeah, I... Yeah, so this episode was way better than episode three. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I actually anticipated. <laughs> I really enjoyed this episode. Didn't really have any problems with it. Thought it was good bridge between... That, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was episode five, season one of Mando, and when we eventually see them again in season two. Yeah, and seeing Boba and Fennec together, you know, they have a good relationship. Good episode. I thought it was fine. At this point, I'm kind of here for one character, and it's actually not Boba at this point. I'm just here for the ride uh, to see where it goes, but... um. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything more, so I just... Yeah, that's my thoughts. Okay. So, with that being said, um, we're going to go into our discussion, and then we're going to do something a little bit different in the conclusion, and we're going to do our mid-season kind of like, what did we think of the halfway into the show? Mm -hmm. So, okay. with that being said, let's get into this. So, as per usual, this is the fourth episode, and it has to start with this uh, just seems like this is a trend at this point, but this is a little different. So it starts with Boba and his back to tank. So you can guess what happens next: a flashback. So Boba's on his ba uh, Bantha and goes to Jabba's palace, and it's got a bunch of guards. And Boba knows his limits, so he retreats for now and rests a night. And suddenly he sees a light and sees a dead person on the ground, and it's Fennec Shand. So this is the connection from the Mandalorian TV show to here now. So this is how Boba meets up with Fennec. Mm -hmm. So Boba saves Fennec and goes to a doctor to heal her. Pretty much she got a gut shot wound. Before they go in outside, there is a gang of um, spy kids, of course, Power Rangers. Shh. But they see this robot doctor who takes a payment and modifies Fennec's insides to save her. Fennec wakes up and... Boba knows her identity. Boba reveals his identity and past as well to bond with her. Includes his run-in with Tuskins. And Fennec laughs at the idea of Tuskins killed by swoop gang members mm -hmm. because she he reveals that. And I that kind of leads me to my theory on why I think I'm correct um, because uh, I don't think that it's a swoop gang members. It's actually some other player. So she mocks that idea, and uh, I kind of called that. Uh, but before we get into anything further, 
What did we think about that overall conversation between Fennec and Booba? Okay, so in my case, well, I'll say this. Uh, right off the bat, I think this is a way better flashback than episode three. Episode three was just too short. It did not give us much. It only gave us Tuscan Raiders are dead, supposedly killed by the Swoop, ba by the Swoop Bike Gang, and Fed also discussing with the Pike Syndicate, but it didn't lead to anything. So it was way too short. And to be honest, the flashback in there could have easily been integrated in this in this episode. And once we talk more about the flashback, you'll you'll see why. Uh, but but yeah. So basically, uh, we getting the answer and finally seeing what Bova and Fennec were how they actually like not only meet up but how they discuss like what happened and and everything and how they're now going to do a specific mission it was it was awesome and also and definitely it's interesting how Boba could not really find an actual like doctor or something like actually heal her like heal the wounds of Fennec. Instead, he had to find somebody that literally uses cybernetic, like implants and stuff, in order to actually rebuild her. <laughs> that was interesting, and that's all I, I gotta say. And I actually like, and I like their interaction together. And yeah, not much. So, what do you think, Hanson? Yeah, I don't have much to say here. Of course, this plays into the overall episode, but it really starts here. I think I've said it before previous podcast, but Boba Fett, at least in present day, doesn't feel right in that I don't buy that this is the same character. I mean, it, it was explained how, you know, being with the Tuscans kind of changed him, but I feel like what he is and how he acts, how he's portrayed, doesn't feel right. I know what they're going for, but it doesn't feel right, but with this flashback in particular, he's acting, or at least for me, he feels and acts like how he did in his appearances in Mando. And personally, I feel like his appearances in Mando, or comparing his appearances in Mando to Book of Boba Fett are like comparing two different characters. Like, they don't feel the same. And here, I feel like I'm watching Mandalorian Boba Fett and not B.O.B. Boba, which weird, but at least that's how I feel about things. Speaking of mm. speaking of that, in regards to, did you actually feel that the jungle? Because I actually I'm starting to now I think about it. Yeah, I'm actually starting to feel like a disconnect in regard because because the, the way this episode was directed and I guess even written, it does seem like it's like Boba Fett here is portrayed differently compared to say the previous episodes, especially three. Right. Yeah. And and, and I think as we discuss this episode a little bit more, we can get into that because um it, it gets a little bit more weirder for uh Boba's character, weirder in general and just his character later on. So let's just discuss a little bit more and then we can get to that for sure. Boba wants uh, Fennec's help to recover his fire spray gunship. Instead of calling it Slave 1, it's called Fire Spray. Whatever. So it's at Jabba's Palace. So he wants her help to do that. And he said that if she helps him, her debt will be paid and she can go her separate ways. So they scout Jabba's Palace. Fennec sends this uh, scout droid inside and they like finds all the little enemies on the dots and it maps out a nice little map when it comes back. So Boba lets the Bantha go and Boba wants to become a boss instead of working for idiots and kill the double crosser who kind of um, it was around with the uh, did the Tuskets, I should say. And there was this quote where Fennec says, people like us decide when we're finished, um, which I thought was interesting when, when she said that. It always seems like Fennec has some interesting things to say, but she just doesn't get as much of a spotlight compared to Boba. Of course, I mean, it's Book of Boba Fett, but I mean, you'll see it throughout this episode that Fennec just steals the show uh, throughout this episode. So they decide to sneak in at first and they go through the kitchen and fight these two droids. And then somehow a little tiny rat catcher droid appears and uh, Boba has a hard time uh, with this droid. 
And th this just played out as a very silly, very, very silly scene. Just made Boba kind of just a silly character in general. And even at the end when he got the droid uh, with Fennec just kind of pinning him, Boba holds his neck and says, I am Boba Fett or something like that and fear me. And then the droid just shuts down. And it just seems like a corny line. It's just like, why even say that? Just do your job and just like, just disable it. Don't worry about that stuff. But it's just like, he has to make his presence known like that. It just kind of seems off a little, little stupid because like, what if that droid escapes and then lets everybody know, Hey, it's Boba Fett. Boba Fett, Boba Fett's here. So th that was just an odd scene overall, but it was just a, like a funny kid scene. I guess me. in Boba's mind, even if the even if the droid got away from his grasp, Fed would have still like shot him or something. So maybe maybe that's why he was like showing off a bit. But to be honest, yeah, yeah, it's, no, it's not no, not, as... not to shoot it because if they shoot it, because then they'll alert everyone. Well, not shoot it, but Fen but Fennec had other tools. I mean, she even managed to like cut the head of the kitchen droid with just using her I guess super acid or whatever she has like a dagger acid so she could have done something so I, I don't think so I don't think the droid would have been able to escape easily once it was already in Fett's grasp so there's that but to be honest it's not nearly as bad as compared to the absolute incompetence that was in episode 3 where oh god I already mentioned my rant on that so I don't need to reiterate on it so yeah, in this episode, anything, anything that feels like out of place or silly, I think it's like, yeah, might be silly or might be out of place, but I've seen worse. <laughs> Last week we saw worse. So to me, it's just like a small sigh of relief that it's not nearly as bad. <laughs> so there's that. So yeah, uh, that's what I got to say there. Uh, I thought it was a fun scene. Like I said, uh, with, like your last episode, they can throw whatever they want at me. I got the EU. Whatever they want to do, do whatever. You want to have a fun little scene of Boba and Fennec d d dancing around with robots? <laughs> sure. I found it a little ironic in that scene because it's like when after Boba's finished with the droid, Fennec is like, come on, hurry up. We, we got shit to do. And she just reminds me more like Boba than the actual Boba Fett is. <laughs> makes me makes me wonder because Phoenix Phoenix said that that um, that he, she told Fed like the sand people have made you soft and and Fed's mm -hmm. like no it made me stronger and I must uh, and then oh and he also says that you can't really survive for a tribe and to me I'm like hi really because i actually think they made you soft given what we see in the present yeah. time scenes when he's a crime lord so i actually think fennec is kind of right he did get soft soft More so incompetent well that too yeah of course then again one has to wonder i mean he explained at the start of the episode why he wants to start this but i i, I don't know Do, okay i know we're already past the beginning part of the episode but I, it just dawned on me now does anyone feel like his explanation didn't really work or is that just me uh i actually thought I actually was puzzled was when I was watching the episode I was actually puzzled as to why he until now is like yeah don't be a bounty hunter don't work for other scum like I'm like I'm wondering like what did the Tuscans like actually teach him that to that made him like oh yeah bounty hunting yeah screw that shit like that's I mean, what I'm I curious. can understand him wanting to move away from being a bounty hunter cuz it doesn't sound like a pretty good life, and like he said, he works with a bunch of idiots. And being with the Tuscans would have changed his view on things. That I can understand. I still don't understand why he would want to start this crime ward stuff. I mean, wanting to start a, a family tribe of your own? Okay, sure, but why this? And I might be missing something. I accept that. I could be missing something. It just... I... I just don't think this works. And I still don't think his explanation really works. And as we see in the present day, like, he's kind of aimless. 
Like, what is he tr even trying to do at this point? I mean, I would say go the way of the EU and have him become Mandalore, but this Boba Fett d couldn't give less of a shit about Mandalore, which, hey, I'm all for. I think that's really interesting, but I, I don't think this was the way to go. I, I didn't see, like, the really the development of how he came to be, like, you know, this hardcore badass to all of a sudden, you know, like, after he's, like, at his worst point ever, and then all of a sudden he's, like, kind of like, oh, I'm, I, I want to change, and I understand that, but, like, change to become, like, this really soft and friendly type of person instead of, like, if I was in that situation, like, and you're beaten down by the Tuscans, you're beaten by the, the freaking Jawas, I'd be a little jaded and pissed off with, like, everything and i just want to just escape and do my thing okay here's a question in the eu because i'm not too familiar with post jedi content how did boba act after getting out of the sarlacc pit did he act pretty much the exact same did he change in any way mm, oh, he was mostly the same ruthless cunning wanting to work alone well wanting to work alone in quotations because he did have to accept dengar's help and nila's help in order to pretty much not only get killed but also to basically um, get revenge well, get, too. yeah get revenge from the, yeah the quad right yours and the and the others yeah basically so he did remain mostly the same character but there were a few things that they changed inside him definitely definitely the sar the sarlacc uh his view on the sarlacc probably was one of the things that they changed in him because i do remember there was this one part in the eu that said that he literally shot the sarlacc from his ship in space <laughs> which i mm. found a bit funny so. okay so yeah i was just curious i I understand the fact that you can't really compare the two because one version lived with Tuscans for like five years. Yeah, I just think it's interesting how one version pretty much kept things relatively in line, not really throwing any wrenches in there. Well, this one goes in a completely different direction. And like I said, I don't think it's explained properly or developed all too well. He just sort of comes to this conclusion, which has some basis in logic with his experience with the Tuscans, but it gets shaky. As they deal with the droids, all that's done. Boba and Fennec then fight two Gamorreans, and alarm sound, and more guards come. And Boba goes straight to a ship, and Fennec just holds him off. And in this, she's truly a badass. She is holding off all the guards. And then at one of a split second, she shoots down this lock for the door and uh, they escape. And this whole time, Boba is like piloting the ship. And, and uh, basically just to move it around, he's kind of like hitting the rocks and the concrete and stuff like that. So he's having a hard time just trying to escape and figuring out how to get out. And it isn't until Fennec just, you know, shoots the lock and then they escape. But overall, I, I like that scene where Fennec is just truly a freaking badass. Yeah, I was wondering, like, like if the door was open or closed. And apparently, yeah, it was closed. And I think Boa what had in mind was shoot it with the lasers of the Slave 1. But unfortunately, the hangar was just not big enough to man maneuver the Slave 1. So <laughs> I guess there's that. And yeah, Fennec was definitely a badass. I mean, no, no wonder she. Well, I mean, she she definitely is a, gr a great partner for Boa Fett, <laughs> and she also can run the crime scene, the crime lord uh, scene better than Fed does. That's for sure. <laughs> As they escape, Boba's like, "Okay, your debt is paid," but Fennec decides to stick around. So she sticks around with Boba, and you know the rest from there. Boba decides to get some revenge on the Swoop Gang members. So you see a bunch of Swoop Gang members, and then you see in the distance, up in the sky, something close in, and it's it's the uh, Fire Spray gunship just shooting down on these Swoop Gang, uh, Swoop Gang members, and he kills them all. 
and uh I, I loved that i thought that was awesome and i know some people were complaining like oh why not just go out of the ship and start shooting them there there was like fucking like 20 30 of them no way i'm using my ship I like actually it's have, so dumb i actually have not heard anybody like complain about that about just him just shooting like doing the, like complain about him not doing that like i actually thought I actually thought it was vindicating on seeing him destroy the the soap bike. Though I'm still, though I'm still wondering if they are wrecked. Then I guess until I don't know final episode or something, somebody in the Pike Syndicate is gonna reveal. Oh we, oh spoiler alert! We sent the soup bike to kill the Tuscans or something. Because if that doesn't happen, then literally the soup bike just killed the Tuscans, and that to me would be stupid. Like, it would just do you think stupid. there was? There's a reason why they had Fennec jokingly talk about the fact that a, a swoop bike gang couldn't take out a tribe of Tuscans. Mm -hmm. You don't do shit like that for no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I want to see... I definitely want to see the reveal that the Pike Syndicate was behind it. Like, it better be there. If it's not, then... Yeah, it definitely was stupid. <laughs> After he kills all of the Swoop Gang members, he goes to the Sarlacc pit that he got swallowed up in in Return of the Jedi. And um, Boba has this idea where he thinks his armor is in the Sarlacc pit, but he doesn't remember that the Jawas took it from him. So he totally blanks on that. This was what kind of like one of... Uh, not a fan of this scene. But he gets closer inside the pit, and he thinks it's still dead. But as it's, as he's going closer with the uh, the ship, he turns on the light, and then it just slowly goes deeper and deeper into the pit. And, of course, it's still alive uh, as a jump scare. And uh, it's attacking the ship. It's holding the ship down. And then Fennec, at the last minute, uses the... Um, presses a button, and drops a, um, a oh man, what is it? proximity mine mm -hmm. down into the gullet of the uh, Sarlacc and kills it, which I which I thought was great. And then at the end, Boba's like, hey, don't touch my buttons. I'm just like, screw you, Boba. Let Fennec do this. Like, <laughs> And of course, Boba sa I mean, Fennec saves uh, Fen um, Boba's ass again. Uh, but what, what do we think about this? I'll say this, that was a, bad, a badass way to kill the Sarlacc, literally detonating a sonic mine in its mouth. That's actually cool. I'll say that. Uh, second, in some way, yeah, I could, in some way, yeah, I, I could understand why Fed would want to search the armor there, but yeah, uh, I think the, I think the hit that the job, that the Jawa did in Boba's face probably literally gave him a bit of amnesia that, oh wait, the Jawas actually took my armor. So we'll have to see how he remember, how he remember. That's my only question. Like, how will Fed know that? Oh, it was Cobb Banff who had my armor all along, and then of course we'll have to find a. Uh, We'll have to, I think by, I don't, I think it's episode one, season, season two, episode one of Mandalorian. If you remember when uh, Fred is like looking at the, uh, the Mandalorian ship leaving, I think they're probably segmented to that scene or something. Like, because we'll have to see how, because they have to explain how Fred knows that, oh, it was a Mandalorian that has the armor, which used to be in Cobb Banff's uh, possession. They have to explain that. That's like the only thing that I can think of that they need to explain. Uh, that's the only thing so far in the flashbacks. They'll I don't think they necessarily flashback. have to explain that. I mean, if Mando could catch wind of guy wearing Mandalorian armor, to me, I think Boba Fett would be able to as well. And considering the fact that at the end of, I think it was the first episode of season two, whatever Boba's first appearance in season two was, he was, you know, there. So it, it, I think this is one of those things where you as an audience member can easily put two and two together. We don't have to see it. It's not necessary. Audience, yes. But what I'm wondering is how will Fed know? Oh, yes. It, the Jawas took my armor, which is now in Cobb Bam's possession. If Mando could catch wind of a guy wearing Mandalorian armor on Tatooine, I think Boba Fett would be able to catch wind of that too. Well, it's not like Cobb Vanth was hiding. He was very 
openly embracing the fact that he was wearing Mandalorian armor. The point is, I think it's it's one of those things where it's just obvious. But I, I guess while I'm talking now, how amazing was it that it had a beak? I was kind of worried it wouldn't have a beak, but it did, and that makes me happy. Let me guess, because of the OT fanboys shitting on the special edition that adds the mouth of a Sarlacc? Yes, there is that. Now, of course... Anything involving Dave Filoni has been good in regards to acknowledging the special editions like the um, uh, Crystal Crisis arc from TCW, which obviously is only in um, animatic form. When the big um, kyber crystal is destroyed and it blows up, you see a ring, which obviously comes from the special edition. Point is, I was expecting them to acknowledge the beak because of past experiences, but I was so fucking happy to see it. And I would also really love to see if anybody got, like, triggered at that. I've heard some people say that they didn't like the fact that Boba Fett dis like, fucking blew up the Sarlacc pit. But it's like... I mean, I thought that was a really great moment. I mean, I thought it was great. Yeah, too. Like... of course. I, I would have liked it if he himself did that, not because oh, that thing is holding the ship in place, and not have Fennec do it. I would have rather have had it him be, you know, flying the ship or whatever. Sees a Sarlacc pit, just fucking shoots that thing to hell. <laughs> Basi and, basically do yeah. what EU Boa Fett did. <laughs> Not saying I hate the moment, I actually I really like the moment. The jump scare was, like, telegraphed. It did give me a nice, pleasant surprise with the beak. But I I'll also say this in relation to that. Because the jump scare was telegraphed, you knew it was coming. That's what got me thinking, like, oh yeah, yeah. Leading up to the beak, because... In the original, in the theatrical cut, that thing is just a hole in the sand. There is nothing in there. Mm. So if they're leading up to a jump scare, that can only mean the beak. And I do like the fact that we, we see that it can move, like, up and down. So for those of you who wanted a Sarlacc pit that was just the hole in the ground, there you go. Boba and Fennec then rest. Boba wants Fennec to join him, and Fennec does. And Boba then goes back to Jabba's palace and kills Bib Fortuna and claims his throne, which is in a later flashback. So they kind of like fast forward, and uh, so Boba does kill Bib Fortuna later on. Yeah, so um, we're finally caught up. Yeah, yeah, but I have a feeling that there might be more flashbacks. Just. I just have a feeling that's going to happen. Mm. It's just going to be a common thing at this Speaking point. Of that, up until actually, the... actually, in regards yeah. to the future of flashbacks, there is one thing this episode says. And it ha and once Fed wakes up from the back to tank, the droid says, congratulations, Fed. You are fully healed. Which makes yeah. me wonder, hmm, well, if Fed is no longer going to be using the back to tank, at least not for the, for the asset, then... They'll have to find a way to force him to use the back to again if they want another flashback scene. But I do think that was a deliberate thing, that droid saying that. I believe we are done with flashbacks in general, and that the last few episodes are just going to be focused on the conflict with the pikes. But that's just me. I just have that feeling. How funny would it, would it be if, like, all of a sudden, like, Boba gets, like, blown up and he has to go back to the back to tank? That would be freaking hilarious. Dope but anyway. Uh, so the scars on his outside have healed. As the, uh, the droid uh, announced that he's been completely healed at this point. We go to the cantina and Chrysanthemum is there and he looks pissed off. Uh, he's staring at these Trandoshans that are winning this game. And as you guys know, Wookiees and Trandoshans hate each other. Yeah. And Boba wants to, goes to the cantina as well and sees the Wookiee. And he's fighting the Trandoshans, just throwing them around. And uh, he grabs one of them, who uh, smashes a glass on him. Big mistake. And then Garza appears, and she tries to convince him, hey, like, we'll get your debts paid out and everything. And 
just don't do this and just stop all this. He just looks at the trend ocean and he just rips his fucking <laughs> arm <laughs> up. <laughs> okay. And of course, it's not bloody or anything like that, but it's just like that was just a fun sequence overall. Okay. Right off the bat, I'm going to say I fucking love that he, that he actually ripped off the Trandoshan's arm because Wookiees are known to rip arms off just as episode 4 in New Hope established. And finally actually seeing that in live action is freaking cool. Well, In a scene that's not a cut because well, we did have Chewie rip off Umkar Plot's arm, arms in a deleted scene in episode 7. Oh, yeah, just but, wanted to throw that out there. But that's deleted, so... Not canon. Well, that's why I'm saying we have seen it in live action, but this time not in a deleted scene. Yeah, so finally we got to see it in canon. <laughs> so it was awesome. So I love this scene, obviously having a Wookiee fucking wreck shit and tearing off someone's arm is great. But here's why I think this scene is absolutely amazing. Is that not once do they say that Wookiees and Trandoshans hate each other. Or that Trandoshans are the ones who, like, threw Wookiees into the uh, gladiatorial pits. Mm -hmm. That's never said. And so, if you know that, you just know that. <laughs> and I love that. Now, obviously, you can gather the fact that, yeah, this guy hates Trandoshans. But if you already know the history between Wookiees and Trandoshans, that just adds to it, and without... And the fact that they don't say anything is just amazing. Boba then approaches Chris Antum and says, you could use a job. So um, this then leads to Jabba's palace. And there's like a gathering of sorts with all the different families. And you can also see Chris Antum in the background wielding his gun. So he's joined with Boba's forces for now. So Boba gives a proposal. And once they're aid against the Pike Syndicate, they ask, uh, what if we kill you and you know that'd be done with it we don't have to worry about it and the rancor gets angry they all agree to be neutral and not help i guess so instead of actually helping boba they agree to be neutral and not take a side and boba does everything um i guess it's just it's a little confusing but that's what they agreed upon so then boba then says he now needs muscle for the fight he needs more muscle they have the credits, but not the muscle. So Fennec says, credits can buy muscle if you know where to look. Then it ends, but if you noticed uh, something in the background playing, the theme of the Jin, the Mandalorian's theme was playing a little bit. It was very slight, but you did hear it. So yeah. that leads me to believe that Mando is going to be joining eventually. Um, Maybe the next episode or towards the end of the fight. But he'll be joining for sure. That's without a doubt. I mean, I think we all saw this coming, but... Um, actually, no. Yeah. Me. I you didn't see it coming? Because I actually didn't expect uh, Din Djarin to show up in here. Like Really? Uh, wow, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I know he and Fed, like, they had the... Like, I, I know I know Djarin is no longer with, uh, with Grogu, but... But I actually, but I actually didn't. It didn't come to my mind. Oh, he's gonna make a cameo in Book of Boba Fett. It was silly me. I should have actually expected it. Okay. So, oh, yeah. It's just, it's okay. But yeah, I mean, but anyway, that's that's how it ends that episode. But what did you guys think of it? I'll say this: I really like this episode a lot more compared to episode three. Episode three literally felt like half of it was just a waste of time or was just trying to, like, all, the good ideas it had, like the flashback scene was just cut short in favor of just showcasing the spike it wannabes kicking ass and shit, you know, like tr like showing their weapons and stuff against Corsantan and then the speeder chase. Like, uh, it, like that episode just had issues. But this episode, it just, like... It was what I wanted to see uh, after episode two. Like I wanted to see more answers from the, in the past, and I wanted to see how, like, like, like basically, I wanted more answers from the past, and and actually see Fed, you know, getting ready for I guess war with the Pikes. Syn well, the Pikes Syndicate stuff was established in episode three, but it's just a way a way better episode. One thing I will say 
the episode 3 flashback, I strongly think it easily could have been integrated in, with episode 4. So it was like, I think, 3 minutes long or less. It easily could have been implemented to this episode. It would have flown a lot better instead of the flashback in episode 3 feeling too short, just cut off when it was just getting really good, or at least going to showcase what Boa was going to do next after the Tuscans were killed. Like, it just could have been, like... It should have been in episode four. Like episode three should have focused probably purely on the present or well, the direction episode three was just, yeah. So episode four, massive, massive improvement. Yeah. Honestly, I think having the flashback in episode three worked just fine. It gave the audience enough time to sit on it. Like I didn't feel the need to see what happened immediately afterward. Because obviously we would get that in the next episode. That aside, really like this episode. You know, getting to see... We're finally getting the answer to what Boba and um, Fennec's relationship was at its origin. Personally, I would have wanted them to have met or at least crossed paths in, like, the Dark Times era. Now that's not going to happen. I mean, it could, but it... I just do not see it happening. No. And otherwise, yeah, you know, they play off each other really well, so that really, like, carried the episode. And, of course, getting to see the Sarlacc's beak was the best thing the show has done by far, and that is not hyperbole from me. I thought this was decent. I'm just, um, I'm just kind of, like, over this show at this point. I'm not like overly excited to see what the conclusion is at this point. I just want this kind of to be, just to be over at this point. I, I mean, I liked the, like the Mando is going to be appearing. I think that's pretty cool. And Fennec is just truly awesome. I, I, I love her as in general. And I wish there was like a show on her <laughs> without Boba Fett. I think that would be awesome. I, I feel like it is dragging on a little too long and don't think there's enough for me to continue this but i will finish it for sure but i just want this to be over so i can watch other um, more amazing shows like peacemaker uh than this but that's just me i got a i got a question was it episode three that soured so much the tv show or several factors besides just that episode i think several factors for me the direction they were going with boba fett the writing for him just making him kind of like Making him all brawn but no brains, and the way brains. they made him more incompetent of sorts, mm -hmm. and Fennec kind of just picking up the pieces for him. Since now we're going to our thoughts mid uh, mid season, right for Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. So one yeah. thing I gotta mention is how because seeing these episodes, and I even went as far as going back and seeing how Boba Fett showed up in Mandalorian season two episode. I think it was seven or so the, the episode in the, the episode called the tragedy i think it was chapter 14 and in there he was complete absolute badass cal calculative and pretty much like kicking all sorts of ass and supposedly this takes place after he already had you know been with the tuscan raiders and and already gotten the slave one from fennec shan it's like it does like I do agree. Like Mandel's, like Mando season two wrote Boa Fett differently compared to Book of Boa Fett. Episode four did feel close to Mando season two Boa Fett, uh, but the other episodes feel like they're just going on their own way in some ways. It's like I don't know if it's a clash of writing or like I don't know what's going on. Like I don't know if you guys got um, any ideas on what is going on. Like how is it that. Mando season two portrays Boa Fett as literally the badass that we know, whereas Book of Boa Fett is like a more soft, kind of incompetent uh, guy wearing a Mando suit and one that cannot really solve problems by himself anymore as he used to. Like, what is going on here? Do you guys got any ideas? That how that why is it that Mando season two portrays Boa Fett as the full on badass with the Mandalorian armor that we know, whereas in Book of Boa Fett it's like the more soft, uh, kind of incompetent version of him. Like why is it too different from both? Especially uh, because they this, are take place the same this time. This is, you know, even my friends have even discussed this, and I even brought it up in this episode. I think how. 
Boba Fett in Mandalorian is in line with how he was in the original trilogy. And there's a disconnect between the original trilogy slash Mando and Book of Boba Fett. In Book of Boba Fett, we do find out why he's different, but it doesn't really explain properly his, like, just complete change. Obviously, living with what are essentially natives, a tribe of natives for five years would change you a lot, but he's acting, like, so far off from how he should. Mm -hmm. And also, the other disconnect comes from the fact of, okay, so we get the flashbacks in Book of Boba Fett, but how he's presented in those flashbacks kind of lines up with how he's portrayed in Mando. It's not perfect, but I can see it. But then once we get to the present day, I have no idea what the fuck happened. Yeah. I, 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 I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I mean, Favreau, obviously this is his stuff. He's writing all of this, and he's made it very clear that he's a big Boba Fett fan. Does it really show that he's a big Boba Fett fan in this show, like the way he's writing it compared to in, in The Mandalorian Season 2? It's, it's odd, because as far as I know, in Book of Boba Fett, there's only one writer credited across the board, and that's John Favreau. And of course, there's different directors, but I haven't seen like any other credits of other writers. Whereas in Mandalorian, there were actually several credits of different writers. So it see, wasn't fully See, that's the happened. thing too. It's like, usually when it comes to TV shows, there's like multiple writers. There's not usually like one writer, but like this guy's doing like every single Star Wars show practically. And he's been part of Marvel too. And it's just like, maybe this is just too much for him because it's like, He's doing, like, literally everything, and it's just, like, it doesn't seem right for him to do that. Mm -hmm. I just checked, and yeah, uh, Mandalorian Season 2 had John Favreau, Rick Famuyiwa, yep. uh, if I butchered that, sorry, Dave Filoni, and Christopher Yost, whereas Book of Boba Fett only has John Favreau and Dave Filoni. That's it in terms of writers. See, yeah, that's the thing. So, And yeah. also, Mandalorian had way more directors. It had... It has Deborah Cho, Rick Famuyiwa, Dave Filoni, Bryce Dallas Howard, Taika Waititi, John Farrell, mm -hmm. Peyton Reed, Robert Rodriguez, Kyle Weathers. And in Book of Boba Fett, we only have Dave Filoni, Robert Rodriguez, Bryce Dallas Howard, Kevin Tancharoen, this episode's uh, director, and Steve Green. And that's it. It's a clear distinction in the quality of those directors in Mandalorian and compared to this. It's weird that this one has less writers and less directors. Probably the biggest reason why why we're we're, see, we're seeing uh, changes in I guess quality and even writing and when comparing Mandalorian with Book of Boba Fett, yeah, it seems like one person or two people are doing everything instead of a few more. That's a problem, and especially when they, I mean we have Kenobi next, we also have Andor, we also have uh, Mandalorian season three, and like you need to have multiple writers, and if you just have two people, it's just like. I, I don't know about you guys, but it would drive me insane to worry about like all these TV shows coming down down the mix. I'll be like, let me just quickly just make this and then just move on to like Kenobi or something like that. Like, because it's a lot of work. It's a huge workload. It is indeed a, a lot of work. I, I think it shows. I think it's showing. No, I actually agree. Yeah, because because Robert Rodriguez in Mando season two, how many episodes did he actually direct in there? I believe it was just two, right? Uh, just one. So, yeah, ju just one, whereas in Book of Boa Fett, he, he apparently directed one and three, and maybe he's going to direct another one. Yeah, it, it, it seems that the lack of directors and writers is starting, is starting to take a toll on the quality of Book of Boa Fett. Other thoughts mid-season. Well, I, am st I still want to see how Book of Boa Fett ends, but I do hope we do get uh, the last answers that we're waiting, you know. You know, like the reveal that the Pike Syndicate killed the Tuscans, uh, and oh, obviously the the Giant showing up, and how that how that stuff of the Pike Syndicate is gonna end. Like, I want to see how that goes. Uh, but other than that, well, oh, and also better explanation for why Fed is like this 
incompetent soft crime lord because I, I still have that and they'll have to find a way or something. That's all I can think of in regards to me being interested in this TV show. Other than that, uh, probably going to start going down your mentality, Django, if the show gives me another episode three <laughs> repeat. If it does that, I swear I'm probably going to be like, okay, what the hell is going on now? <laughs> I mean, I'm invested enough to question things, to like certain things, etc. But at the end of the day, like I said, I still got my continuity. That's not being touched right now. So if they want this Boba Fett to not make any sense in terms of having completely different portrayals in what are meant to be the same fucking time period, then go ahead and... That is true, because it's like, you already have the Expanded Universe version, and if it's like, say what you want about this show, you might not like this Boba Fett, for instance. Hey, you can go to the Expanded Universe and discover, you know, these awesome stories on Boba Fett and see how much of a, you know, cool character he is. You know, he, he doesn't really change much from, you know, after the Sarlacc bit and discover his adventures from there, because it's like, pretty endless, pretty awesome. Yeah, it's not it's not like the sequel trilogy where that actually very much made Disney. Yeah, we're scrapping the entirety of the EU and we're no longer making a canon, not even making material for it. So, so yeah, with something like Book of Boba Fett, it's more easier to digest that at least we do have the alternative. So, yeah, yeah. more understandable. That's not going away. I, I just have a feeling that I, I just don't know if they're going to actually have a solid finale i mean big with all this action and stuff like that and i have a feeling it might be like one or two episodes i, I i'm gonna predict one episode and they're probably gonna do filler for the next two episodes <laughs> i'd love to be totally wrong i i feel like this this show is kind of dragging for me i do want it to be better for sure in the present time because i feel like the past moments uh the flashbacks are actually more interesting you know episode two was great i really enjoyed that quite a lot but that was like the really the only standout episode for me but it's just like every episode was just like it was good to like man so i i just hope it kind of improves from there but i don't know because it's like so far it's just shown that the lack of quality when it comes to the writing and the uh the direction as well because it's like Episode three. I mean, we've gone through this many oh, times, yeah. but that was not good for me and CJ. Like, we just did not like that episode at all. A lot of people so. do not like episode three. Like, after we finished recording, I I checked, and lots of people don't like it. Even other Star Wars YouTubers don't like it. like like 100% Star Wars and uh, and Eckhart Slatter. Several others just don't like it. Like, literally, episode three is like the most hated out of Book of Boba Fett. Yes, and I would say the argument can be made that the worst of Mandalorian is better than the worst of Book of Boba Fett. I would so agree. make of that what you will. I would agree with that. And, and, it, and it's interesting because there were times when I thought Mandalorian just dragged because I wanted the Grogu stuff to just be done with already. You know, I went into that show not wanting any Force users, just wanting to focus on the criminal underworld, and then, of course, it just became about a Force user. Hmm. So having, you know, side quests and shit really annoyed me. But, honestly, despite that, I do think Book of Boba Fett is a downgrade in terms of quality. I've, and I've said this before, the premise is iffy outright, at least in my opinion, well, I mean, we'll see what happens. So, yeah. I didn't like the idea of him becoming, like, this crime boss. Well, I didn't want him to go back into bounty hunting. I just wanted him to kind of, like, go discover his routes and stuff, like his Mandalorian routes or something. But it just seems like, yeah, I, I mean, now it's like we're seeing that it's just not going the way that, with the way they're writing it for him in the present time as a crime boss. It's just it's not working out Positive. here's the interesting thing and i said this before i actually like the idea that this boba like this version of the character just doesn't give two shits about his mandalorian heritage and i wish they explored that more you know his interaction with bo-katan for example i thought was really good 
we're not getting that. And I think, it, like, if you're going to have a version of Boba Fett just not care about his heritage, do something with that. But they aren't. Hell, maybe, maybe, maybe they could even they would, maybe they could even get uh, either Din Djarin or Borkatan somehow show up in you know in whatever episode that Boba Fett explores his Mandalorian heritage or something like that. I don't know, like just an idea or more Mandalorians. Yeah, to inspire them in the end and just I I think maybe in the end he might like give it up. Like hey, I don't want to be a crime boss. Maybe I want to go with you, Mando, or do something else. Hmm. Maybe that too. So, there's that indeed. The only major positive I can I can give Book of Boa Fett is, of course, performances of the actors of Boa Fett and Fennec Shan, Tamora Morrison, and uh, what was the what was the name of uh, Ah Ming Na Wen? Yeah, like yep. they they definitely kill in regards to their performances. Like no criticisms there. Like that's the best I can give for for Book of Boa Fett so far. That their the performances of the two is insane. Yep. So that was our discussion of episode four and kind of our mid-season review of uh, this whole series. So that was our discussion. And if you guys could let us know in the comment section what you thought of this episode and the mid you know, midway into this, what you thought in the comment section below, that would be great. We'll be discussing episode four the next week and uh, give you guys our thoughts on there. So we'll do another video for sure. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.